Hi everybody, my name is Claire. Welcome back to my channel. I have done two paintings now with the same set of paints. I've still got a little bit of leftover. Um, I don't want to waste it. The colours are beautiful. They're really pastel-y colours. Um, pale greens, pale blues, um, pale pinks, bronze and some white. Um, they've got some silicon in them. So I'm just going to pour everything I've got left into a cup and do a flip cup to see what results I get. Um, just hate wasting paint. Um, and I might be able to make something pretty out of it. So um, let's try. I've got here a 30 centimetre square canvas. Um, this colour was the colour that I scraped from my worktop. Um, so this is a mixture of all the other colours. So I'm just going to make a really nice puddle in the centre with that colour. So then I can pour into that puddle and it would just help the paint to flow. So I've got about a good three quarters of a cup here. I was going to do a flip cup. Um, I'm not now. I've decided um, to do a, oh, I don't know, straight pour or ring pour. I'm going to do a straight pour because I want to experiment a little bit with lifting up the cup and pulling it down again um, and twisting it. So, um, yeah, I'm going to do a straight pour. Right, this is definitely going to be a dark blue painting. The dark blue, just it was a slightly runnier paint, so it's um, you can see how it's taken over. So I'm just going to add some more of this round, just as a flow extender around the edge. But actually, that green is coming through. As I'm uh, watching this, it's, it's that green is becoming a bit more obvious. Right, let's start stretching it. So you can see how that flow extender is working because I'm not the blue isn't rolling over on itself. It's pushing against the outside colour. So I'm not losing any of the design. You can see here this ridge, you can see it go moving towards the edge. So it's about to go, it's about to run over. So I'll just stop that for a second. Oh, the green's really coming through. So I'm not too worried about actually losing some of the edge colour this time because it is so blue. So I think I'm not going to add any more flow extender. I think I'm just now going to tilt over the corners. Right, I managed to save this really pale green line. Um, I thought I was going to lose it at one point then, but I've managed to save it. Because I think that looks really pretty. Wow, I am totally amazed. So to start with, it was a dense blue painting. But now look, it's not. It's not at all. Blue is definitely the dominant colour, but the green is not far behind at all. That is so pretty. Right, need to work out whether to torch. 
for some beautiful effects in this. The reason I wanted to experiment with holding the cup up high is I think when you get the cup up high, the, co the, the colours dive down underneath the other colours and I think often create more of this, um, more sort of lacing, more cells, more bolder looking effects, more of this effect. Whereas if you just hold it in low to the canvas, you get all the lovely fingerlings and all the ripples, but you often get less of this sort of blending colour. It was interesting. I'm not sure quite why I chose to put the pink right in the centre, but I think it works. The pink and the bronze next to each other. Right, let's think about torching. I will torch, but only in certain places. I guess the bit I don't like as much here, this is a bit muddy looking. Let's torch there. Oh, that was a bit close. I didn't mean to go that close then. Right, putting that down so I'm not tempted to use it again. <laughs> Let's just see what happens. The longer you leave it, the more these expand, these cells expand. So I finished torching. I love it. I'm so happy with it. I've got this wonderful sort of effect coming around here and coming around here. I liked it before I torched and I like it after I torched. I can't honestly say which I prefer. I think both work well. Um, these cells are so cute. They are so sweet, so pretty. I love the green, blue and white together. And then you've just got almost this I don't know what you call it. The, all these lines, all these craters through the green here. Um, a few cells and then you move further in and you've got the really tightly packed cells. Really happy that I torched in the centre because look what I've got. I managed to reveal lots more of that bronze so it really glows because this was the only bronze bit to start with but this really electric looking bronze is now coming through. Um, you've got the very centre there and then I just, I'm really happy with just these different waves, these waves of cells. Uh, it just makes it more interesting. So you've got the interesting lines from the straight pore, but then you've just got, I love the combination of the cells and the lines together. And this white, oh, it's not white actually, I think it's pale green line. It's so unusual. It's such an awesome effect. Um, and here, this sort of lacing white over or pale green over the blue. What an unusual painting really pleased with it really happy i so often find it the way when i'm just using up paint just for the sake of it i end up making a pour that i'm really happy with this is no exception i love it i'm so pleased with it um so you've got the wonderful um straight pour pattern the round design but then there is just something so tranquil and relaxing um, about all these little cells. It definitely looks like water, some sort of whirlpool. Um, and then these are all the bubbles um, floating up to the surface. It's got depth, I think, so that it looks like the centre there is backwards, is, is further away. Um, the green is such a pretty green. I've never really used this green. Um, 
yeah just i'm so so pleased so i have now used these paints these exact paints for three different pores and have three totally different results so i think what i might do um at some point is do a, a post and show you them all, th all side by side um the other thing i'm really happy with can you, you can see how iridescent it is but i don't know if you can get a sense of how smooth it is so often if i do a ring pour or a straight pour can you see how smooth it is there um, I get lots of ridges and lots of bumps because I keep the paints quite thick. So these paints were just that little bit thinner and that it is just so smooth and so glossy. Um, it's, it's really, really beautiful. It's less forgiving. So for example, if I've got something in the paint, like just here, if you can see, there's just something slightly in there, um, you can see it. So that's the downside of having um, thinner paints, as you can see every single little blemish, every little bit of unmixed paint. Um, but I'm so happy. It's so tranquil somehow, so soothing, so soft. Uh, also, with the paints being slightly thinner, the colours have blended more. And with blues and greens, that just works perfectly. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Please hit the thumbs up button if you like it. Um, leave me any thoughts, any comments you want to. And um, please do subscribe to my channel. Great, thanks for watching. Bye.